Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mystica here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. A game that despite some of the weird things that I'm aware of, I'm still questioning why this game is scary. But whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and load up. And for those who remember, um, as far as this game is concerned, we'll be getting back into playing this again. We'll probably do this for about two, oh well, no, maybe about three, maybe four episodes, um, depending on how it goes. And then we'll go back into Song Richard 2 Battle. But let's pick up where we last left off. It's actually been about, like, what? A week and a half since I'm now starting to do two uploads a week instead of just one. So let's go ahead and get back into this. Okay, here we go. Alright, so let's see if we can remember what happened last time. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking a piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. What wouldn't be that? Nah, wasn't for all of you. Oh my goodness! Once again, I I hate the color of the text against the freaking thing. I actually tried to look to see if there was an option to change the text size. There, there isn't, sadly. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Gatsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Yeah, that sounds like fun, actually. <laughs> it sounds really fun. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? You mean calamari? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name. Wait, what? How it... Um, her name is Monica. What does that have to do with squid? mon -ica? Okay, there's a Japanese joke here. I don't get it. I'm... Eh? Yeah, exactly. That's what she, that's my response. Like, what, what do you mean? That's not how you say my name at all. Also that joke makes also that joke makes no sense in translation. Oh good, so they're they're aware that this joke makes no sense. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Uh, uh? <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone's back at their u everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she notices anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Connor, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Connor. 
Wait, what? I'm not asking me. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Connor. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Siori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Siori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Connor. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her, er, seen her as so cheerful? Because it's just how she is when she's around you? I guess that's a good point, although you're being kind of creepy. Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Siori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Siori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from her, over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. Now, I can understand that. I'm the type not to do that either, actually. <laughs> Unless it's someone that I've known well enough, then I do. But if it's the first time sort of person, yeah, I, I never do. I flip and never do. It's like too much fear in your mind is all like you're so afraid of what could go wrong. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? S sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. That perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Connor, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Siori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head and she may not always know what she wants. 
I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware of were in you. Th that is, I think that. She wouldn't be a very fortunate person. She would be a very fortunate person. <laughs> I miss reading crap, I swear. To have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the te that down on the teacher's desk. Oh, I swear. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because her, of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Eh? We're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Oh, wow, okay, so she's being a bit nosy. That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Connor in collectivities? Eh? eh? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Connor. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Oh, 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 poor, poor Yuri. Oh, good lord. Look at her. She looks embarrassed as all heck, dude. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Connor, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them anyway. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, n no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Connor. I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. 
Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we filled the water pitcher, we returned to the classroom. Connor, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. Oh, she's actually doing legit tea leaf stuff. Oh, cool. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to, a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Connor. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Connor, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than bending over my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Oh really? She does. That's unfortunate. Especially at her young age and everything. Of course, you know, if you don't sit with proper posture, that kind of does that. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Huh. I don't think it's fully the posture thing, but okay, here we go. I retrieved the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. Wait, when did I buy chocolates? It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Siori's candy radar. Why, do you like chocolates too? <laughs> I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading, pro reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her... <laughs> touch her chest. Okay. Alright, dude. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Eh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Really? Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Okay, style definitely changes a little bit as far as the look here. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any uh, harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips... As if this situation was completely natural. Okay. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. <laughs> what the heck? What type of chocolate is this? Was that a piece of a Hershey bar? Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? 
Oh, she didn't realize. Oh, good lord. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did. Did I just. Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um. Connor? S sorry. I guess it sh I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's. Well. Y you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean. Not really in this kind of context, but yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then you don't need to stop or anything. I I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her, of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. What the heck? <laughs> it's cut to silence? Okay. Alright, that, that got weird. Okay, everyone! Ah! Uh, uh, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Connor, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? I yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh, come on. I don't think you two are going to actually attempt kissing there in the, in the club room, I would hope. I mean, seriously, you know, you gotta get your own room for that. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean, it, clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Aw, that's embarrassing. Who should I show my poem to first? Maybe we should just go to Natsuki first, because let's see, um... Because we know which people do or don't care for our poems. We already know last time Natsuki didn't give a crap about what we wrote, so... <coughs> I guess we show her first, it gets it out of the way. Yeah, no thanks. Eh, you didn't even- Next. I see, there you go. We didn't even have to read nothing. <laughs> okay, let's go see Ori next. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Connor. Siori. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Oh, that's... Huh, that, that's off. I wonder if we're already going to get our first death in this game. Siori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Siori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Wait, I didn't even read any poems she had! No, no poems! Okay, I guess we'll do Yuri next. Connor, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came- it, it never- it never came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. It, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad. I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. 
I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Connor, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's, I had said this in a previous episode, I suspected she really didn't have anyone to talk to other than the club, and I was pretty spot on. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with, or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face, or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. See, this is what I figured. I figured she was probably being bullied. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Connor. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Connor. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, You've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um... If you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head into her, put her, puts her head into her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Okay, so it says beach. Oh, good lord, the writing. Very tiny writing. Okay, maybe I can read a little better this time. Uh, beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, uh, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest wood to get lost in is one where anything can be found. But can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. I mean, that's why you, you move it away, but okay. Uh, <laughs> will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish with the sand, squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is getting is is gent is gentler yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foaming tendrils, turn back and I abandon my peace to ev to evade at the shore. Um Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Okay, there we go. Good lord. It's really hard to read her script. It really is. 
Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard. After yesterday, Nasuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. Oh, I wouldn't know. Nasuki's not been letting me read her poems as of recently. So Nasuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I see. Nasuki didn't even let me read her poems. I don't have much to contribute. I suppose to better compare the difference in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not as bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, this is ending up shorter than the last episode we did. And of course, the last is Monica! Hi, Connor. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding my hands. This one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sally, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself, but still defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstand. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. No, I'm pretty sure she doesn't considering how she makes it kind of clear she sticks to herself. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Okay, well that's not the same thing. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway. I'll share my poem with you now, right? Er, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wa wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Lost adrift the sky. Victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me. When all others have turned away. The legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. <coughs> now this reading's right on my throat. Sheesh. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist, and with a breath she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Alright, huh. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers as the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? 
Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much effort into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second! Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh, we are going to get our first deaf. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Ah, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck does she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. <laughs> just went to pee. <laughs> okay. Okay. Masuki, please, show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my French with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Who? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What does she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. <laughs> of course, cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. N no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. And now Nasuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Siri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations that help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway... That just leaves you, Connor. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Nasuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You can always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah... Uh... I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Masuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Connor may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. 
so therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Connor to- What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work, and baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Connor to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said! I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Connor, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh, yay. The pressure is on now. But of course, I'm going to go with... Oh, it's not doing the weird thingy. Okay, well, this is interesting. So we have to choose one person to help out. Um... <laughs> I know there's a thing that eventually you have a weird thing happen with the mouse, but it's not happening yet. Uh, we don't know what Sayori's doing. I think she's helping Monica out anyway. And Natsuki's being the butthead, so we'll choose Yuri. Well, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you, Natsuki? I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Connor. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Now, Suki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said it would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Suki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Connor? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? <sighs> Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I mean meant at all. Uh, uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Connor picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kinda surprised, though. W why Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kinda appreciated it. I'm sorry, I'm making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are gonna be the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Uh, um, eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. Oh, oh wait. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Oh, I don't have to put a number in. Oh, okay. Huh. I guess the reason why I'm surprised by this is because 
Remember near the beginning of this Let's Play where I said that what caught my attention was this whole thing with unfortunately a kid committing suicide and it was linked to this game and the dad did mention that there was a part in the game where you eventually put your number in and the game would contact you through messages. I'm starting to think that doesn't happen because according to the game we exchanged numbers but I didn't have to type anything in. I'm actually starting to question if the father's if, if the father of the kid was even playing like I don't know, I guess I'm starting to question a few things now, because I've, I've already seen some videos relating to people debating about that. And of course, by now, they're not really talking about it so much by now, by this point. But some people were actually debating about if the kid was even playing the, the main version of this game, for one. And some people were debating about if the kid was playing a modded version. And then there's even been some debates with people pointing out that some of the stuff that the fathers described that the game does, the game doesn't even do. And it's even possible that the kid could have been playing other games as well. That look like Dory- um, not Dory. The heck am I saying? That look like Doki Doki, but aren't actually the game? I don't, I don't know. I mean, at first I was almost starting to think, oh shoot, the father was right, but then I don't have an option to put in a number. And it's like, oh, maybe not. I don't know. I'm questioning some things now. Alright, uh, let, let's just get back to the game now. Anyway, okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? I is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I prefer going to your house. Alright, in that case it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. <laughs> I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Connor. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point that... to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looked straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out to the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of the school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already- oh wow, it's already Sunday. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard her thing from Suri since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Oh no. I think something bad's gonna happen. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Siri isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. 
I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Siori? Oh! <laughs> she's not dead yet! <laughs> what the heck? Oh, uh, false alarm! She's not dead yet. False alarm. <coughs> Sorry. False alarm. Hi, Connor. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siri's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how'd you know that? Siri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Connor. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Siori! I grab Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Siri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Connor. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Connor? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression in my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Does she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little bit a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Connor. Yeah, unfortunately in this case, he, he kind of doesn't. And growing up, I did have a friend who deal with depression, and, and that's the thing of it. There's only so much you as the friend of someone who deals with this can do, unfortunately. The, the fact of the matter is, unless they find the help or treatment they need, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much support you can give them. The reality is they really have to seek it themselves. If not, it, it doesn't really help, unfortunately. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort uh, caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. 
It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer to everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <sighs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Connor. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Suri's shoulders. This time I'll put her into a tight I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh ah, uh, Connor. Suri. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Connor. Suri isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Suri's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this. To me. Please don't do this. Connor. I... Suri barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have uh, to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Jolly Siori finally pull puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Connor. The only time I'm not feeling some nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Siri lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, ah, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Suri wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I would re then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Siri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I'll look forward to it. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over, too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Oh shoot, this is taking much longer than I thought it was. Ah, <laughs> uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. 
It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff of you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay, we, we need to save right now. I'm looking at the time. It's been more than an hour. We need to save, and we are getting to a point to where we're going to save over our slots. I do not want to save like a whole crap load of slots here. I know there's like so, so many. But we're going to start saving over. So we're going to overwrite the save, and we're going to start back on here. So yeah, that should be about it. Okay, I actually hit the quit option right after I saved. I should have hit return, and I hit the wrong option. Uh, but we're, we're still good. Everything is still on there. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're all good. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and stop right now because it's been almost an hour. These chapters are getting longer and longer. We're gonna have to break them up practically. But as we can see, so, so that was interesting. Um, I, I don't know, I was kind of suspecting from the way that they were having Sayori act near that last bit that maybe there was something relating to that, especially since, like I said, I kind of know a few things what's gonna happen this game. Although I am questioning, like I said earlier about the whole the kid and what games he was playing. I don't know. I'm starting to think that if he was playing this game, this wasn't the only game he was playing and there was probably other factors involved. But um, definitely next time we're going to pick up and we'll see how the Sunday evening goes, I guess. And we'll see what happens. But I almost thought we were going to get ourselves our first really true jump scare in this game or close enough jump scares you're going to get. I don't know. Uh, but regardless though, if you enjoyed this episode, if you liked what you saw, you know the drill. Like, free, subscribe, all the good stuff. And with that said, I will see you guys around later. Much bye.